be talking about how the cell cycle is regulated. So we said that the cell cycle is a series of um, basically events that the cell goes through as it first prepares to divide and then actually divides. And um, this happens for a variety of reasons. So um, obviously as an organism grows and develops, they need more cells and um, the cell ha cells in your body have to divide in order for them to uh, increase in number. But sometimes an organism might have some form of injury and in order to repair, they will need new cells to replace the damaged cells. Um, the cell cycle can also uh, cause cells to divide um, when their lifespan is over. So we said that depending on the type of cell, uh, they live for certain periods of time. So not all cells um, undergo the cell cycle or divide uh, in the same at the, at the same rate. It really depends on the type of cell. And some ce some cells or some types of cells they divide at a much faster rate than others. Now, no matter what uh, the reason uh, behind cell division, it has to be somehow regulated. There needs to be some form of mechanisms to protect the uh, process of division from going off the rails. Uh, because what that's going to do is you're going to have too much cell division and this can lead to so many problems, including cancer. By the end of today's lesson, you should be able to describe how the cell cycle is regulated using a variety of mechanisms, including checkpoints, external, internal factors, cyclins, kinases, and the process of apoptosis. In eukaryotic cells, both internal and external reg factors regulate the cell cycle. What does this mean? This means that our cells are constantly receiving signals from either inside, internally, or outside, externally. And these signals, some of these signals, tell the cell to divide. Or they might tell the cell to not divide or to stop dividing. Um, so depending on what kind of signal the cell is um, receiving, it will uh, basically uh, tell the cell to either increase uh, the amount of division that's happening or slow it down or stop it altogether. The first one I want to talk about are external factors. So these regulatory factors, uh, just like their name suggests, come from outside of the cell. And they could be physical factors or chemical signals. Okay, so they could either be physical or chemical signals. An example of a physical um, external factor or a physical external signal is cell-to-cell -cell contact. What does this mean? If we were to grow cells in a lab, in a, in a Petri dish, just like you see here on the screen, okay, this is a Petri dish, and if I was to conduct an experiment in the lab and I basically grew cells on this Petri dish, then healthy normal cells will stop dividing when they come in contact with another cell right next to them. So uh, we would expect if we are growing healthy cells in the lab to see one layer, just like you see in this picture, one layer of cells forming on our, on our Petri dish. All right. This is because cell to cell contact is a physical signal, a physical external signal that tells the cell to stop dividing when it comes into contact with another cell next to it. The second type of um, external factor are growth factors. And growth factors are types of proteins that increase the rate of division, increase the amount of division that is happening. Um, an, ex an example of a growth factor uh, are the growth factors that are found in your platelets, in your blood. And essentially, when growth factors are carried to certain types of cells, uh, they travel in the blood, and when they reach certain types of cells, they cause these cells to divide at a higher rate. You would expect someone that is going through puberty um, to have high amounts of growth factors in, in their body. Because your body, as, as they're growing through this developmental stage in your life, your bodies are growing and um, developing, and therefore they need these signals, the growth factors, to tell things like your muscles or skin cells, fat cells, etc., to divide and, and, and grow. Um, people who, uh, some people who go to the gym, they, they take growth factor as an injection. And this is a very unhealthy um, practice. I definitely, um, you know, there's so many side effects to doing this and you can uh, research some of those side effects. But basically, uh, some people that 
they want to grow muscle and they don't want to work hard for it or they don't, don't want to work out for it. So instead, they'll just take a growth factor, which is almost like a, a form of a steroid, and um, this will cause their muscles to grow without them really working out. Another example of an external uh, growth factor are hormones. Um, and for example, like I said, uh, they regulate the growth of so many parts of our bodies. Um, and here I'm giving an example of bone growth. So the reason why our bones elongate and grow as we age, obviously up to a certain point, usually this stops after puberty, is because growth, growth hormones, they basically tell your bones to elongate and grow, which means that they that more of the bone cells will divide in order to build on the bone and make it longer. Um, other growth factors can come from the environment outside of the cell. Things like drugs, alcohol, radiation, and viruses can all serve as external factors. They can signal cells to divide at faster and higher rates than normal. And that's why um, these environmental factors, I would say negative environmental factors, can lead to excessive cell growth, excessive division, which means the cell cycle is kind of happening more, more frequently than it should. And this can lead to cancer, right? Exposure to, exposure to radiation um, and uh, living and um, basically having unhealthy lifestyles um, and the exposure to certain kind of viruses can cause um, the cell cycle to divide or basically higher amounts of division, which means that the cell cycle is not as regulated, which can cause or can lead to cancer. The next type of factors that regulate the cell cycle, cell cycle are inter internal factors, okay? And just like their name suggests, internal factors come from inside, within the cell. Um, if, so, when you are traveling and you kind of go to the airport, and I know that sounds like uh, something out of science fiction now because we're like traveling, when? <laughs> but, you know, we've traveled before and um, usually when you go to the airport, there are several checkpoints, right? You can't just waltz into your plane without going through any checkpoints. So there's several different checkpoints that you have to go through. Your bags have to be scanned, your passport has to be checked, uh, you have to be scanned and you kind of keep doing this up to the point where you're entering into the plane. Okay, so that keeps happening until you enter into the plane. So by the time you've got, gotten into the plane, you've now went through like four, five, six different checkpoints. And this is all to ensure that you are the person that you say that you are and um, you are traveling to the correct destination and you're not going to cause any problems. The cell does the exact same thing. Before, um, if you remember, the cell cycle has different stages, right? We begin with G1, S, G2, and then M. Before um, one stage of the cell cycle can progress, so before um, G1 can progress to S, and before S can progress into G2, and before G2 can progress into mitosis and then cytokinesis, there will be a checkpoint. Okay, so there, there will be a checkpoint here, 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 and here. And what is this doing? This is basically checking several things. Is the DNA, um, has the DNA been replicated? Is the DNA healthy? Is the DNA, um, does it have any damages? Does, is the cell large enough? Does it have all the necessary organelles and proteins ready? And if there are any issues along the, along the, the process, then the cell cycle will not continue from one stage to the next. And the reason why the cell does this, these are known as checkpoints, okay? The reason why we have all of these checkpoints is to make sure that the cell doesn't go into mitosis if it is not ready or if the DNA is damaged. You do not want to make hundreds and hundreds of copies of a cell that has damaged DNA. Because then that one cell with damaged DNA is gonna divide into hundreds of cells that also have damaged DNA. And that's how we end up with uh, issues. And that's how we end up with cancerous cells. 
cancer cells are, they're like rebels. They don't care. Okay. So a healthy normal cell will stop at a checkpoint. And if there's something wrong, it will not be able to, to uh, pass into the next stage. Well, cancer cells, even though they have damaged DNA and there's many issues wrong with cancer cells, they just kind of go through the cell cycle. They, they, they ignore all these checkpoints that we find here and they progress from one stage to the next to the next and eventually they reach mitosis and they divide and they just continuously divide nonstop because they are deaf and blind to all these signals internal, external checkpoints, all of these signals telling them, hey, stop dividing. There's something wrong. They don't care. They ignore it and they just keep dividing. All right. So that's why um, cancer cells are so difficult to regulate because they don't really respond to these normal signals that a healthy body cell would be responding to. Um, the next internal factor are kinases and we also have cyclins. Now, I don't want you to worry too much about kinases and cyclins. Um, these are kind of more AP bio concepts. And if you do move on to take, taking um, AP bio, you're definitely going to learn more about these in details. What I do want you to know is that um, kinases and cyclins, they, are, they kind of like work together. All right. So one cannot exist without the other. They have to work in tandem. And uh, kinases themselves are enzymes. And they basically, um, they cause cell division to happen, okay? So they either cause cell division to happen or they slow it down depending on how much kinases are present. Cyclins, they basically activate kinases. What does this mean? This means that when cyclin is around, kinases are turned on and they can actually cause cell division or they can cause the cell cycle to um, progress. Um, but when kinases, when cyclins are not there, kinases are turned off, which means that the cell cycle does not progress and cell division does not happen. All right. What are all of these complicated graphs that you put for us, Ms. Faye? I'm not understanding. You're not going to be obviously um, given these graphs and, and I wouldn't ask you to interpret them. But the reason why I have these here is to show you that as we go through the cell cycle, G1, to S, to G2, to M, as we progress through the cell cycle, the amount of cyclin, CDK is cyclin and, and kinases together. CDK is basically cyclin kinase working together. The amount of cyclin and kinases changes. During G1, we have very low amounts of cyclins and kinases. And then during the S phase and G2 and M, the amount of cyclin and kinases increases. Uh, which starts to cause cell division to happen. And then after mitosis is done, we notice a huge drop in the amount of cyclins and kinases, essentially saying, okay, stop dividing, we're done, we did what we need to do. All right, so all I need you to know is that cyclins and kinases work together and they regulate division depending on um, whether they're present or whether they're not present. Now, one thing I want you to think about since the presence of kinases and cyclins causes cells to divide, do you think cancer cells will have high amounts of kinases and cyclins or low amounts? Okay, so think about that question. We'll talk about it in the next lesson. Okay, the last way that um, uh, the cell cycle can be regulated is through a process known as apoptosis. And apoptosis is simply cell, it's like automated cell death or programmed cell death. Sometimes there are certain kinds of cells that just need to die, all right? So the body kind of tells them, hey, either you're not needed anymore, can you please die? Or they will be like, um, the cell is damaged, it's unhealthy, we don't want it around anymore, you're going to need to die, all right? So they give it the signal called apoptosis. And it's caused by um, this, uh, basically, once the signal is received, large amounts of enzymes, remember that cells inside the, the cytoplasm, there's a lot of these enzymes that are found in lysosomes. All of these enzymes essentially digest the cell, and that's how the cell is able to die, right? So you have the normal cell, and then due to apoptosis, all of these enzymes kind of like split it and cause it to explode and die. 
I know this sounds kind of like harsh, like why would the body want to kill cells? Like that doesn't really make sense. Well, sometimes you need to. Let's look at this perfect example of apoptosis in action below. If we look at our fingers and our toes, these are classic perfect examples of why apoptosis is so important. Without apoptosis, then you would have webbed fingers and webbed toes, which is not very cute unless you, have, you add that cute little tattoo at the bottom here, which is actually kind of kind of cute, all right? So basically, um, what apoptosis does is when you are developing in the womb, all right, your body receive, is receiving all these signals, including apoptosis, and it basically causes the cells that are holding your digits or your fingers and your toes together to die. So the, the cell death would occur all along these borders, and then this would separate your fingers and your toes. And if that fails to happen for whatever reason, it's sometimes you have a random mutation, okay, um, the body is not responding to apoptosis properly, you will end up with webbed toes or webbed feet, just like we see here in the picture. All right, um, that's about it for today. Um, thanks for watching.